haere mai. Welcome to the Maxim Institute podcast. My name is Jason Heal. I'm the communications manager at Maxim Institute, and this is our weekly short-form podcast. These podcasts are released in tandem with our weekly column and are a chance for you to hear in-depth from the column's author about some of the thinking that went into producing their final piece. Today we talk to Maxim researcher Natasha Borlas about her recent column. Natasha, welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Very good. Right. You, we're talking about your recent column, fairly a little while ago now, but for Maxim, Hedgehog Diplomacy, Our Way Forward in a Militarized World. And you, in your column, you draw a comparison between porcupines and hedgehogs. Australia has recently been, um, I guess, used the metaphor to describe themselves of a porcupine. You suggest a uh, hedgehog for New Zealand. What's the difference between those two um, genus of spiky animals <laughs> and why, why hedgehog rather than a porcupine? I think the overwhelming reason why it's a hedgehog is because I think they're so adorable. <laughs> oh, that's, that's always a good reason. That's perfect, yeah. Uh, but I think uh, the thing about a hedgehog is it's adorable. Yes. It's still pretty good at defending itself. Yeah. It rolls has, itself into rolls a ball. Itself into you a don't ball. want to it pick one spikes. up. It has the spike. So it has yeah. a lot of the same characteristics as a porcupine. Yeah. Less physical strength, but some pretty good armor. Yeah. Less but aggressive time, too, right? Less aggressive. Yeah. And just cuter. Yeah. People actually like hedgehogs. <laughs> yeah. hedgehogs. Nobody likes a porcupine. That's right. Porcupines yeah. are, they're also smelly. Yeah. They, they shoot quills at you. They're just not, <laughs> they're not at all appealing. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's fine. Some you don't people want to love be appealing, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think New Zealand uh, as a country in its international gesture is, yeah. is more appealing, more friendly. Yeah. And I think that's a, a, a fantastic quality. Yeah. I just think they also need a, a bit of bit spikes. Of yeah, spikes. And yeah. so what kind of form would that protection take? Because I don't think we could. Uh, spend enough money to expand our military or, or buy things That's like right. that. I, so think, I think for New Zealand, it's definitely relational. Yeah. Uh, so being party to as many cooperative organizations as possible yeah. that provide some of those spiky defense mechanisms. So like would Five Eyes be an example of that? Five Eyes would be yeah. a great example of that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously this particular... Uh, piece is talking about AUKUS and yeah. whether or not New Zealand should consider signing up to it. Yeah. Um, my argument is that there are portions of AUKUS that would yeah. be very beneficial f- for New Zealand. Yes. But obviously the way that you go about signing up to that is is critical yes. because you don't want to be being offensive before you, <laughs> you have your defensive your, mechanisms in place right. to deal with the, the fallout. So. Yeah. So in AUKUS there are a couple of different pillars – um, one is the nuclear option, That's right. <laughs> which uh, we can't sign up to as New Zealand because we're nuclear free. Um, but you suggest signing up to pillar two. That's right. And what so does the, that the sharing, involve? The yeah. sharing of technology uh, and and some of the, the arrangements around uh, just mu- mutually supporting each other, yeah. I think yeah. New Zealand could very safely sign up to. Yeah. You just have to be cute about it yeah so, <laughs> a little bit apologetic yeah a little because, bit a little because, bit self-conscious um, but yeah i think the hesitancy comes because uh in signing up to AUKUS we would be seen as aligning ourselves obviously with uh australia uk the us um, but our biggest trading partner is china who kind of stands right. in opposition to them and there's a lot of levers that could be pulled if we sign up to that, I think the Chinese embassy said, look, this is a bad idea. You don't want to do this. That's right. But we, I, th- I think it's important to remember that in international diplomacy, a lot, a lot of it is about saving face. Yeah. And about providing opportunities for other countries to save face. Yeah. And so it's not just about making a decision and announcing it. Yeah. But figuring out how you can announce a decision that shows concessions and yes. consideration. Yeah. We have considered our close relationship with China. Yeah. We don't want to be... Uh, offending our friends yeah we think this is something important that we have to do yeah but we have made these concessions that we're you know this is a big deal for us we're not going to sign up yeah. for this because yeah. this portion of it yeah because we don't want to upset our friends yeah and, and so that's where the cute that's it's where the, the cuteness part. comes yeah. in yeah yeah oh, <laughs> it's still a rodent but yeah. it's a cute rodent <laughs> that's great <laughs> oh that's awesome thanks so much uh, natasha for being with us today thank you for 
Now let's hear from Natasha as she reads her column. Porcupines are challenging to swallow. They make a great deal of noise and, when threatened, release a chemical stink bomb to deter attackers. They also happen to be pretty unattractive. This spiky rodent has been invoked by Australian Deputy Prime Minister Richard Miles when describing Australia's defence strategy in relation to China. And I quote, We need to make sure that our defence force is potent, that it is capable. We need to make Australia a difficult proposition for any adversary. Pointy weapon systems and bristling troop readiness. Unattractive, pungent. Can you take an analogy too far? Indulge me. If Australia is becoming a porcupine, maybe we could aim to be a hedgehog. While they may be a pest here, hedgehogs are are unquestionably adorable. You certainly wouldn't want to try and eat one. You might even offer one a cube of watermelon in lieu of a pad. Did I mention that they're popular pets in certain parts of Asia? You can tell where this is going. Aotearoa New Zealand has an international reputation for reasonableness. Our convenient geographical distance from China, strong trade ties and lack of competing strategic objectives mean we can retain positive relations where other countries have failed. However, healthy boundaries in any relationship are crucial. We really need to consider how we can be in a position to say no to China should the need arise. Unfortunately, we don't have a strong defence force. In fact, it is growing weaker, having lost 30% of uniform staff over the last two years. Military infrastructure and equipment here are too thin on the ground, outdated and malfunctioning. To accomplish anywhere near the capability necessary to pose a military deterrence as the Switzerland of the, the South Pacific... New Zealand would have to spend more money, demand more from its citizens, and telegraph a change of tack that would invite aggression. A better strategic option would be to maintain our interoperability with military ally Australia whilst signalling diplomatic appeasement to key trade partner China. Hence plan hedgehog. If we sign up to Pillar 2 of AUKUS, we can steer clear of the nuclear option, offering up a shrug and a friendly grin to China, all the while ensuring the quills are on hand if needed. Some subtle diplomacy is necessary to accomplish this objective, to make it clear to China that New Zealand is taking a step towards technological advancement, but not away from its relationship with China, and importantly, not anywhere near nuclear capability. Hedgehogs are smaller and more personable than their porcupine counterparts, but they do share some common tactics. No stink bombs for them, but a few spikes that can keep them protected long enough for predators to get bored and go after something easier. Thanks for listening to the Maxim Institute podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us and keep up with the rest of our research and analysis of politics and policy in New Zealand, you can sign up on the homepage of our website to get our monthly forum email and invitations to future Maxim Institute events. You can search and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. From the team at Maxim, Mateo, goodbye for now.